In this video, we're going to be continuing our look at the LG OLED CX range of 2020 TVs. Now, this is an incredible TV. We did the unboxing video earlier, and hopefully you saw that and you enjoyed it. If you haven't, then I will put that up above. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the menu system and the different picture settings and going in detail of all the different options that you've got. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So guys, before we start the video, I thought I'd give you the heads up on a couple of videos that I've got coming very soon. One is about Bluetooth sound, and that's a killer feature which allows the TV to output to Bluetooth speakers, and the TV then acts as a center channel. So that is going to be incredible. And also, we're going to be doing a gaming demo, which will show, obviously, how this CX OLED performs with gaming mode, and we'll look at the graphics and response times, etc. So guys, drop the video a like if you want to see those videos coming soon. And also in the comments, let me know of anything else that you want me to check out because I'm more than happy to do that for you. Anyway, let's head on to the main video, which is all about the settings and the menu controls within this 2020 CX OLED. Okay, so pressing and holding the settings button will take you fully into the settings menu. If you just press it once, then you get the sidebar coming up with all of the icons. Pressing and holding will take you fully into the menu. You then get various options. As you hover above those, you obviously get that pop-up box, which gives you more information. Now, if you do choose to not have that box there, then you can turn that off in one of the options. However, I found it very useful. So when you go into picture mode, you can choose the different picture mode first of all, and they are some that you'll recognize from previous models and also some new ones. So you have Vivid, Standard, Eco, which is what the TV comes with as standard, Cinema, I found that this puts a little bit of a yellowy tint to it, and I'll go through my settings in probably a week or so when I've settled down to which ones I like. The Sports mode will probably give you a little bit more greens and maybe add true motion, gaming will give you faster response and then you have HDR effect, filmmaker mode, ISF expert bright room and ISF expert dark room. Now filmmaker mode is one which is really quite clever. It's not going to be too useful at the moment, but as movies come out, there's going to be metadata embedded within those movies, and it will automatically recognize those movies that have that metadata in them and switch it into filmmaker mode, which is the mode that is designed as the filmmaker intended. And that's really quite clever. And how great would that be that you see it exactly as the person intended. Now, each one of those modes that you go into, if you want to tweak any of those settings and create your own mode, then you can do that very, very easily. Most of them have been thought and pre-planned anyway, so I wouldn't make too many changes unless you absolutely have to. And certainly, I'm sure that you'll be able to find one of those standard modes is gonna be enough for you. But depending on what you want and how much you want to change, as you can see, you can then go into advanced controls. You've got dynamic contrast, super resolution, color gamut, gamma, white balance, color management, and peak brightness. Now, if you want to change any of these settings, then literally just click into one, and then a reduced menu will appear down at the bottom of the screen. And then as you change them, you can literally just click on previous or next. And that way you don't have to keep on going back to the actual full menu. You can literally go straight through them and change them as you wish. The other benefit to doing this is that you see more of the screen, so you get a better understanding of how that change that you've just made reflects upon the actual screen. Now, obviously I'm just playing the video of my unboxing, which by the way, if you haven't seen, I'll make sure that's linked up above or in the description box, but that isn't gonna be the best type of demo to see all of these changes. If you've got something which is a movie or something with a little bit more color in, then some of these things are definitely gonna be a lot more noticeable. Okay, let's head out now of advanced controls and then go to the next one down, which is picture options. Now in here, again, it's a very similar menu. When you click into one, it will appear in the bottom left corner. And again, you can scroll through, make those changes. So here, for instance, noise reduction, make any changes you want to, and then click next. And that will take you to the next menu option. This one being MPEG noise reduction. And again, you can do exactly the same. So you can make the changes. You can see how they affect 
the actual image on the screen and then you can make the changes that you wish. Motion eye care, again, if there's a warning coming up, then it will come up in the top right corner normally and it will say the current option may affect, for instance, in this case, energy consumption. And it's normally energy related notifications that you get. True motion is again another one that you might want to change and I believe this year Cinema Clear is a new option. And you can go into user and make that D judder or D blur or if you're in the right option OLED Motion Pro, you can turn that on and off. Now if you head back to the main picture menu and go to additional settings, this is where you can change the eye comfort mode and by turning this on that means it will automatically adjust the colour temperature of the TV to reflect on the brightness around and this is designed to help reduce eye strain. You've also got two other menu options, HDMI Ultra HD Deep Color and also Instant Game Response and they're greyed out at the moment because I've got nothing else attached to this TV currently. Filmmaker Mode Auto Change, that's what we talked about earlier. If you turn this on it will automatically detect if something has got that Filmmaker Mode metadata and it will then switch it to Filmmaker Mode which means that you can enjoy it as the director intended but it will then revert back to your standard mode whichever setting you've got it on when it doesn't detect that filmmaker mode. OLED screensaver, that's the option to go into to help prevent screen burning. And here you can do pixel refresher, screen shift, and also logo luminance adjustment. And you can choose between low, medium, and high. And we recommend that you do pixel refresher probably once every couple of months, something like that. So the sound on the new range of TVs has been greatly improved. You now have Dolby Atmos, which is brilliant. There's lots of different sound mode settings, and I'll show you those in just a second. You also now have OLED virtual surround sound, which again, I'll be showing you in a separate video because there's also some killer features, which I hinted at at the beginning, when it comes to the surround sound options. If I go back to the main settings and you can see the different sound modes, let me just go quickly up to those and I'll scroll through those for you. There's AI Sound Pro, which is great. You set that up right at the beginning. There's standard cinema, clear voice, sports, music and, music and game. You can then go in and make different settings in that equalizer to any of those as you wish. Now, sound out, this is where it gets really interesting. You've obviously got the main internal speaker. You've got the standard optical HDMI arc, audio return channel, and audio line out, and wired headphones. But now you've got this new option, Bluetooth surround sound and internal TV speaker. So effectively, what that's going to do is turn your TV into the center channel, and then give you virtual, well, not actual surround sound to two Bluetooth speakers. And we're going to be doing a test of that feature, how to set it up and how good it is in a separate video. So make sure you hit the red button to subscribe. And if you want to see that, then again, drop this video a like. You can also hook up a pair of headphones and link those with the internal speaker as well, if you wish to do so. But that surround sound with Bluetooth speakers, that's something which is going to be very, very interesting. Now, in additional settings, you've also got the different TV installation type, and that will tweak the sound depending on whether you've got it on a stand or whether you've got it wall mounted. Okay, the rest of the modes that are there are really just for tweaking. You obviously can have different sync adjustments so that making sure that the audio is in sync with the video. And as I haven't got anything else plugged in, that's why those things are now grayed out, but they would be live if I had something else. Now, programs, we're getting towards the end, guys. It's not gonna go on for much longer, just to let you know. Programming, as you know, that you can go in and program and set up auto-tuning or manual tuning. All of that is very standard. You can go into programming program manager and this is where you can edit the programs, you can swap them about, you can edit your favorite list, you can edit satellite programs as well. You can also go in and lock and unlock programs. So again, if you don't want certain channels appearing, then you can lock them. And again, you can do that with different inputs, like you can lock different HDMI settings. Again, all things which are very standard. Now this HBB TV, which stands for Hybrid Broadcast Broadband TV, I've not had much experience with it, and so I'll be interesting if anyone else out there knows a lot about it, whether it's any good or not, leave a comment and let the rest of us know. The last option in the programs menu list is copy programs. This is where you can either import or export a list of your TV pro or the TV program list, and you can then save that or load it up from a USB. 
With connection, you've got TV name. Now here you can change the name of the TV. You can call it whatever you want. Now, one option I would recommend is doing this for things like AirPlay so that you can instantly know where you're AirPlaying it to. And if you've got a couple of TVs, for instance, then that makes it easier. You've obviously got wired connection or wireless, that's straightforward. And in your device connection settings, you've got auto device detection. And again, in here, you can do things like set up your LG wireless keyboard if you've got one. And you can also set up your universal controller. And again, that is pretty straightforward and standard. The mobile connection section, again, this is where you can turn the TV on with your mobile or set it up to do that. You will need to download the app and link that. But again, we'll be doing another video about the setting up of those type of things in a separate standalone video. The general section, well, this is the AI service, language, location, time, safety, account management, home settings, and also additional settings. So if we just have a quick look at some of those extra things in here so that you know exactly what you can do. Okay, so the first section which you can choose to have on or not, and again, this actually came in the setting up of the TV initially, is the AI service. Now, this is artificial intelligence, so this is effectively where you're using LG's learned algorithms and setting it automatically. And again, you've got artificial intelligence with brightness control, auto genre section so it will learn what type of genre is being played and adjust the TV accordingly. So all of those things are very clever. The other thing again that it will do and again an improvement is the sound is the AI acoustic tuning which again you can have it as standard bass boost, treble boost or off. The remaining features in this section, well, you can choose voice recognition, for instance, and you can also set recommendations to do with things like sports alerts and delete usage data, that type of thing. But again, pretty standard, but again, play with that and you'll know exactly which is what you prefer. Going back into general, you've got obviously the language setting, which is very straightforward. Set your language. You've got a main language, a secondary language. You can also do different keyboard languages. Again, very easy to set depending on what you want. Going back again out of this screen going down again to the next one is location this is where you'll set your location for where you are in the world the time again you can set that automatically if you wish change your different time zone if you want to and also you can set things like timers so you've got the sleep timer and also if I go into timers a second you'll see You've got sleep timer, power off timer, and power on timer, and also two hours auto power off. And again, this is an energy saving method that if it's just static or there's no usage for a couple of hours, it will automatically turn the TV off. In order to make any changes within that safety section, you will need the code, which is a default code of 0000, and that is in the user guide of your booklet. Just in case there's anything different in different parts of the world, do check your user guide. But in this section, you'll basically go in and be able to make restrictive changes so that almost like making it child friendly, you'll have access to restricting different types of program as well as different TV channels, as well as different applications. So you can really go in and customize your TV that suits your family. Okay, next up, you can go into account management. And here, if you've set your LG account, you can go in and make any changes you wish to that. I won't bother boring you with going into more my details. Home settings. Now, on the home menu, as that pops up, you can choose for it to auto launch. You can choose the home promotion, which is where it suggests something for you to watch. That's the very first option on the actual bar. I tend to turn that off. And home animation, again, that just is the actual animation that comes across. You can have it just so that it's appearing if you wish. So after a home settings is additional settings and here you've got the first option which is pointer options. So you can go in and change the tracking speed as you move that pointer across the screen to either normal, slow or fast. You've also got the option to have a larger pointer. So those of you maybe that might be slightly hard for sight if you want a bigger pointer, well then you can choose one and likewise if you want a smaller one, then you can choose the smaller one. Going down, you've got settings help. You can turn that on and that's where the box description, which you can see where it says settings help, comes up. Menu transparency. Again, if you want that on or off, it will either have the menu, so what's behind the menu as a full block of black or slightly more transparent. No signal image. That's something if you haven't got a signal, it will come up and go along the screen. Again, some people might not want to have that on. 
So eco mode is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. This is where you can set auto power off either to not go off at all, so it's on all the time, or you can set it for two, four, six, or eight hours. Home store mode. Now this is where you'd probably see retail mode on a TV. Now I'll show you this very quickly because it is quite impressive when it first loads up, but what it effectively does is it just ramps up the brightness, ramps up the saturation, and then it will pre-play a LG advert effectively. And this is what you'd see when you were in the store. Now, if you want to show people the capabilities or the extremes of what your TV can do, then it might be worth just showing this rather than searching out for the perfect HD bit of material. But bear in mind, it, it's a little bit bright, it's a little bit oversaturated, and so it's not as realistic as watching normal TV. But there is some impressive features about it, I do have to say. So the remaining options are Live Plus, Quick Start, and also you can even choose to turn off that standby light. And there's advertisement, which will give an ad ID for the TV. Down to accessibility, now this is again pretty much self-explanatory. You've got audio guidance, which you can turn on or off, audio description which will talk about what's going on if the TV program has got that built into the background of it. Again, it's designed to help people with hard of um, eyesight. You've got high contrast, grayscale, and again, these are all things which are now built into TVs to help people with maybe some eyesight issues or again, there's accessibility for hard of hearing which will enable things like subtitles and just allow more people to enjoy their TV content. So my friends, fair play if you're still with us at this part of the video. The last menu option is support. The first option there is software update. Some people prefer to have updates turned off automatically and they can check that it's a stable update first before installing it. The very next section is TV information, which is what you actually called your TV. We showed you that earlier. Notifications, here you can go in and just see if there are any notifications. You can see different important changes to user guides and the terms and conditions. The user guide is something which again is really easy to access. You can go in and learn about the LG WebOS and how to operate the TV. You've got um, enjoy your live TV, how to use the variety of content, connect to other devices, the benefits of it being a smart TV, the tour of the different settings and also troubleshooting. So it's a very comprehensive guide already built in. So my friends, the final few settings are optimization settings. Here you can go in and do things like a picture test, an audio test, you can analyze different things, you can find out what they're recommending the settings would be. They're not compulsory, but again, they're just helpful things if you wish to. And that's it, my friends. That is all of your menu settings on your brand new LG CX OLED. If this video has been helpful, then please drop a like. Remember, we've got other videos coming very soon. Thanks for being patient and sitting through nearly 18 minutes of a video, guys, if you are still here. Great to see you, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.